This is a tiny little outpost. Okay. Does this look like it's in Pyro? I don't remember Only when I did the, the Pyro playground. The when it, I did the Pyro playground, I don't remember. That's what I was going to say. It looked this kind of looks like Damar to me. It like the colors look Damar, the ground cover looks like Damar. The trees don't look like Damar. And the shape of the hills don't look like Damar. Yeah. Doesn't look Star Wars. It looks excessively Star Wars. Oh, yes. Yeah. Like, I was like, I'm like, I sat there for a good, like, 15 seconds. Like, Star Wars Galaxy? Yeah, did like, the, the the MR is going to be hard for me to say weird. no to when that comes around. Yeah. Mm. Like, the lighting has this, like, I don't know if it's just because, like, the draw distance on shadows or something, but, like, it looks flatter than it should. I do hope that with 4.0, um, we get missions for the new fobs, um, but that they also add some more POIs to Stanton with 4.0. Yeah, the MR, I, I, I just want to push people around in, in coffins. <laughs> um, oh, somebody said something in chat. Hold on. Uh, they have said they're going to retro into Stanton. Yeah, it, it, it's just a matter of what, which ones and when. So Yeah, and, and like time. It just depends on how much time they got. Yeah. All right, let's get into the monthly reports. Uh, uh, the the biggest thing for me is look at how short, look at how cute and little the squadron report is. It's adorable. It's so small. Yes, I can sell the entire squadron report. Polish was done. Tweaks were done. Reviews were done. They continue supporting other teams that have little stuff to do. That's it. That's the entire squadron report. Like, yeah, Del, there is nothing um, new. There are some very interesting Stanton associated leaks, and you know we'll 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 talk about some leaks and and do some earmuffs at the at the very end of the monthly reports because there there are some things I want to hear what those of you who have seen them um, uh, and those of you who want to hear about them have to say because I have my own thoughts but I like to pick you guys' brains but let's get in the monthly report because we got to get this done. Um, or yes, what do you think? All right. So, again, as I said earlier, as we are to do, we're like reading the headers. So, PU month report. It's October. That means one thing. Citizen kind of approaches. Despite the impending festivities, development continued in earnest throughout the month, with teams across the globe progressing with content for Alpha 3242 and beyond. Read on for, det for all details. Now, I much rather them switch to doing that the the monthly report much more like how they do the do 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 squadron one so here's the squadron one welcome to september's squadron 42 development report enclosed you'll find details on the latest progress made across the campaign including massive or including narrative scenes zero g traversal and corpse details mm, thank you for your continued support <laughs> Of Squadron 42, sincerely CIJ Communications. I much rather them say, like, give little teasers of what's being talked about instead of just mm -hmm. like, progress has been made. I like how they do the Squadron 42 uh, one where they kind of like, we've yeah, made progress on this and this and find this in the upcoming things. Mm -hmm. So just just sort of a, a preference I'd like them to do. I know they're not going to do it, but it's fine. All right. So AI content, I believe, is yours. Right? Uh, yes, I did sorry. get the long one again. Totally unintended. Let me scroll. I, I, down. It's just how it how it how it shakes out. You get community and I get core gameplay. That's just how it works. Alrighty. So AI content uh for the PU. September saw the AI and narrative designers continuing their work on the py in the Pyro system by setting up the spawn data and markup for the various outposts and space stations. Um 
This involved cooperation with the level design team to ensure the, that NPCs were spawning correctly. Then, following discussions with the mission team, AI content spent significant time marking up locations in Stanton. So, new I'm missions. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure with that includes NPCs spawning. I'm pretty sure that includes them removing the pre-spawn NPCs. That was talked about a while ago. Where all NPCs in a location will be dynamic. Mm -hmm. Instead of them having to spawn in and hard bake in those first dozen or so uh, NPCs. And you can happen upon it if it like just spawns in. They'll have those like at, at attention crowds of NPCs. <laughs> it's terrifying. Yeah. Whoa, God. What do you guys. <laughs> Why are you in formation? <laughs> uh, they also implemented dynamic conversations to make the versus bar feel more organic and alive. That's already in 3.24.2. Um, oh, is this it? Tech... Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know if it's at all of the bars, but I know it's at some of them. I just don't know which ones. I forget. Somebody said something about it. Uh, this tech and approach will be expanded to other landing zone locations and included in any future captured content. Um, now, <clears throat> how, how it's it's already been over a week. No one's cried bartender or coffee uh, uh, NPC yet. I'm shocked. Yeah, because it's like we're adding this for to bars and we'll expand it later. Oops, wrong thing. Hey, let me close that so I don't accidentally open it more. Yeah. All right, and <clears throat> pardon me. Oh dear. All right, my turn for AI feature. Yeah, AI features on the PU side. Yeah, the only first thing is AI tech on the squadron side, and that's only on squadron. So, and that's the next one I read. All right, AI feature. With the upcoming release of 4.0, the AI feature team focused on on locking down existing human combat features, including the first reactions, ammo management, and tactics tactics to ensure they work consistently across a wide variety of situations and environments. I think one of the things we're going to be seeing, um, because they've been talking about it with uh, NPCs not having unlimited ammo, um, mm -hmm. and if you walk around to certain locations, and it's especially apparent at the FOBs, because I was exploring one of them the other day, um, there are certain crates um, that are at specific locations that look like ammo crates. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're at specific locations where there should be ammo. And so I, I'm like, oh, yep, I am guarantee those are ammo crates where NPCs can go and get more ammo. My only question is, can I? Yeah. If, if an it NPC can interact with it and refill their ammo and I can't, I'm going to be a bit upset. Yeah. What would be great is if it dynamically spawned, even, even if it was just um, on timer while I don't have a lot of like being able to like call in a, a ship to do the maintenance on the the drop more ammo or whatever so it was just like time to spawn and you could like just bum rush the map before anything goes wrong and just hoard all the ammo so they can't go pick up any more ammo socially confused i want to go to the fob and steal the missiles can you imagine sneaking in there you track to the missiles out of the launcher and then you come in with like an unfriendly you know, uh, uh, an, an enemy uh, ship or something like that. And you just hear it going click, 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 <laughs> click, click, click. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, my gosh, that'd be great. Yeah, you can see them on the crates. They're they're on the, they're like all stacked in the, there's like a storage shed thing at the fobs. And it's like, well, well I needed more missiles. And it's a good thing I came here. Just like right, the, so... uh, the security <clears throat> office in the uh, DCs also have like, eight uh, p4ars which you can't interact with anymore oh why yeah How i don't know they? i did i like, i, I did some delivery artwork. missions you know on live the other day and i don't know if it's all of them but uh at sakura sun and i think the kovalex one i think it was on hurston i went to both of them i went into the security area you know the the checkpoint and I went there to steal the guns because that's what I do. And you couldn't interact with them. And I was like, 
<gasps> there wasn't even a prompt that didn't work. They were just, you know, they were static assets. And I was like, rude. <laughs> You're putting guns in front of me. And like, yeah. Wow, but I guess, I, got... I guess technically that's more believable. But then again, why can I go in the door? Why is the door open for me? I shouldn't be allowed in the door yeah. where all the guns are. Lock yeah. the door. Don't lock the gun. Mm hmm. Yeah. Lazy CIG. Yeah. Fix your shit. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, AI Tech. AI Tech on the Squadron 42 side. Last month, AI Tech enabled the designers to set default schedule areas and tags on instance, instanced NPC ent entities and then export them at, uh, in object containers. Mm, I don't know what that means. Hmm. This I makes it easier see. for levels with pre placed NPCs. As information is no longer required to be pa uh, to pass through scripting. Um, oh, okay, so when the object container for that level loads in, the NPCs load in with it pre-placed. They're not; they don't have to come out through a closet. I think Got is it. what that means. Uh, navigation um, cost volume can now also be enabled and disabled through flow graph nodes and modify its initial cost at runtime. Don't know what that means. Um, on the performance side, further improvements were made to the vision, observable, and perception components. So they, they if you remember, they demonstrated this uh, either in an ISC or an SCL where they're going over AI stuff. And this was like a couple of years back where they were first demoing the tech um, mm -hmm. or the ability for like, you know, AI who are out on patrol to be able to perceive things, you know, um, you know, when a you know, vehicle flying by and they turn and track it or something like that or or find cover or whatever, um, or they'd be able to, you know, perceive, um, you know, a, a character at a distance, you know, and, you know, either, you know, r recognize it and ignore it or recognize it and like move to contact. Um, now, you know, and, and it was based off of vision, you know, or, or, you know, doing it by sound, but, you know, whether it's something they can see or hear. Um... Well, I screwed up the document. Um, so that's all on the Squadron 42 only side. Um, also, I have two AI text categories. One's yours, one's mine. Uh, and you took mine. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to do the AI tech on the PU side, uh, and then you're going to to get back on schedule, you're going to do AI game intelligent dev team. Okay. Um, um, for example, uh, update frequency was adjusted based on AI character level of detail so that closer entities are more responsive. Um, the team also implemented lighter AI zone handling. Um, oh, okay. So, um, the their perception yeah, ha, ha, has sort of a fall off. It isn't a linear thing based off of level of detail. And so if you're farther away, you're lower level of detail, it, you're, you're dip more difficult to see. It isn't a, okay, this, it isn't, um, imagine you're in bushes, you know, at 150 meters away. And it's like, well, the, the NPC has perception out to 150 meters. But if they make it based off of LOD and you're, you know, at that distance, your level of detail is much lower, the likelihood that they can perceive you is going to be a lot less because of that, because of having it being based off of um, character LODs, if that makes sense. That's not how <coughs> I read it. How do you read it? Uh, so it says, for example, they adjusted update frequency based on AI character LOD. So the closer entities are more responsive. They also implemented lighter AI zone handling for observables, which will deliver significant improvements when zone queries are made by NPCs, being that farther away NPCs are not as hungry for uh, computer resources because they are updated less frequently. Oh, OK. That makes sense, too. Yep. I mean, what you said makes sense, too. So, yeah, actually, like, but that's not a both performance are, thing. Right. Um, but it is a like it makes sense for, like, their perception. But I think their perception is slightly different. Um, yeah, perception so can't be the, a flat thing that says, OK, I can perceive everything yeah. from zero to 300 meters, um, despite whether you are hidden or partially hidden or something like that. You know, yeah. it's 
it more of a, a not really a chance perception, but it's you are less perceivable when you're mm-hmm. 299 meters away because you are more difficult to see from that distance. You're, you're yeah, the I level of works, detail. It works a lot like the radar system works. Mm-hmm. You have your <clears throat> sound, you have your cross section, and you have whatever other signals uh, that you know the character has, like senses, sight, touch, smell. Um, hearing and so they are querying the environment when they do that to see if they can perceive a threat Mm -hmm. and they've talked about this like different NPCs will have different reactions to those things Um, roll d20 yeah Yeah. Um, Yeah, roll for perception so everything between um, um, what is it on the performance side um down has been also on the pu side by the way um so you want to finish that last sentence in there uh yeah the team also implemented lighter ai zone handling for observables which will deliver significant improvements when zone queries are made by npcs and now we're back to you on the pu side interesting so that's on there there is one more sentence on the pu side so i'll read the top bit then the one last sentence uh, oh, okay, AI tech okay. on PU. The AI tech team began September focusing on server meshing, including how AI systems and components synchronize during server transition. Performance improvements were also made alongside progress on features that will be unveiled shortly. There we go. I can read. Uh, following last month's report, AI tech finished their tasks for the movement system component synchronized or synchronization between synchronizing the subsumption component that updates ai behaviors that's a lot of improvement actually because basically they're saying it's ready for server meshing and they're ready to implement uh, uh, some assumption well and the the other thing that's really interesting is the so right now with static server meshing there isn't really any reason that an ai would transition servers right. but they're getting the AI ready to be able to transition servers. Right. So they're, they're especially definitely... for dynamic <clears throat> dynamic yeah. could be anywhere there, anywhere a, um, object container is a transition. Yeah. So yeah, if they, if they get on a tram, they could easily be changing servers and they're going right. to be doing that because they'll be visible. Um, uh, the performance improvements were also made alongside progress on features that will be unveiled shortly. Features being unveiled shortly for AI tech. That is something I'm very curious about, and I think I know what it is based off the leaks. <clears throat> is, it, is it the wave system? <laughs> is it horde mode? Um, and then the last sentence that's for some reason after the performance section that we just talked about. Um, finally, for AI tech the team, updated AI ship reinforcement functionality adding support for planetary navigation cost volumes and navigation exclusions. Um, I believe that they also said in the PTU that they are working on to fix uh, the reinforcements for missions that are well, not missions, yeah. but like locations that have them. Yep. I saw that. And that's when I, when I saw that, I remembered this and I'm like, Oh God, I please let that be working again. Cause I didn't know a, it wasn't working. Like, I oh swear God. I yeah. Let... It, it broke within like, a, a point one patch of them releasing it, you know, and um, I have been they, working. It well, it worked initially, and then they just stopped getting out of the cutty. Oh yes, that yes, 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 yes. Okay, for some reason I yeah yeah they haven't been getting out, but yes I yeah they, they'll okay. come in and be a, a sitting duck for you, but they won't get out. And and they, but they when the tech first when it first released and everything and whatever patch that was. They actually got out, and now they, yes, they don't. Yes, they're supposed and so to get I'm, out of the ship. I'm very hopeful that A, it works, um, B, that the – because they are working all this perception stuff, that the vehicle, the re- reinforcement ship, you know, the Cuddy, or, or whatever mm-hmm. they end up using because it won't just be the Cuddy, that they'll be able to perceive us and the turrets will shoot characters on the ground. So that way, Ghost can't just so easily light him up with a railgun and, and, you know, with game over, um, you know, make it interesting. 
Um, but then adding them to all the all the locations where you'd have combat encounters, you know, the the DCs, the the fobs, you know, um, I, I'm very excited to see that be more of a thing and to make these uh, the combat encounters uh, on, on the ground much more interesting and have a very believable way for things to escalate in terms of challenge, um, yep. in, you know, quickly. We need a medium dropship. Are you saying medium is smaller than Valkyrie or? No. So we have, I guess, I guess large is what I mean. So we have small being the, the, not less. We have medium being the um, Valkyrie. I guess we need a large, like something that can like put out like an entire platoon at once. Oh God! Don't get me started. I don't. I don't, I don't <clears throat> think the. I don't think the Hercules does that because there's not enough seats for one. Um, and also, that's it's built for fielding uh, armaments, not fielding people. Liberator, same problem. I think it doesn't have enough seats. It's, See, it's the reason a, you don't have larger dropships for for carrying troops. Idea. Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah. Because you one aircraft gets shot down and you lose an entire company of people. Yeah, um, I think more. Now you can have larger uh, transports, but not dropships. A, dra a dropship is something that is deployed from, you know, meant to be able to be deployed from a, you know, a troop transport carrier, you know, type thing in orbit into the combat zone, not nearby, into the combat zone. And that you do it that way in order you to disperse your force. So if you lose one dropship, you don't lose combat effectiveness. You, you, you know, so with, same and, way we do it now. Instead of having a double, like the size of a double Valkyrie, there'd just be two Valkyries. Yep. Yeah, that's that's why the... Now the... I want to recreate the intro to Hitler 1. Oh, I I just want ODST, oh, man, but in Star good. Citizen. <laughs> like, but like they, They've already done the, the like next three... thing. Now we just need ODST. <clears throat> with like the three pelicans uh, flying in. I just want to recreate yeah. that. Oh, uh, so, cool so yeah, I'm I'm very hopeful <laughs> yeah, for that. Ex perfect example. Yes, the Jensen Starliner is my new dropship. Yeah, I I'm very hopeful for this to make it back in game because that will make co-op game nights and, and dropship ops with the the um the vomit comet that much more fun again. Speaking of which, yep. if you want to join us for the next round of. Uh, dropship troopers in Star Citizen doing um, co-op gameplay in Star Citizen, relic hunting and and retrieval missions and such. Uh, we're going to be doing it on the evening of the twelfth. So uh, the the announcement uh, is in the events in my Discord. Um, now we're on to AI game intelligence, right? Yep. 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 Uh, AI, the AI game intelligence development team. And so when they're talking about AI, they're not talking about like NPC AI. They're talking about using AI to develop the game. Um, and so they mentioned that specifically when they're talking about Planet Tech V5 last year. Um, the game development intelli or game intelligence development team spent the month working toward the release of StarScript 1.0 with the main goal of improving how the tool feels to use. For example, how the devs zoom in and out and how text becomes visible or hidden at certain levels. They're also optimizing the search speed of the main smart browser and uh, drawing of the graph view. I do not and, think that's what this is, though. Yeah, overall graph view in the new interface. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure that the AI game intelligence development team is the team behind the subsumption editor or star script editor at this point. It is the team that is in charge of building the intelligence or behaviors of NPCs. Oh, this team has nothing to do with the team. It. I thought it's, this was the people who were didn't we have a team where they talked about a group of people that were working, working on the use of integration of AI into the development? Because it wasn't just, they weren't just thinking about it for not team planet it before. I know it's, I know it's been the only time I've ever heard it was been in the plant tech team. 
I could have sworn I read something. Maybe I'm just losing it. I mean, anyway. I have been I have been saying it for a little while, well, at least a year <clears> now, that like a a LLM harnessed with Star Citizen lore unleashed on uh, NPCs would be really cool. Star GBT. Starfarer has 12 seeds. Perfect drop ship. Yep. Perfect. Giant, slow oh. target filled with explosive fuel. You might as well be a Zeppelin. Yeah, the Hindenburg was also a drop ship. Worked out <laughs> great. <sighs> perfect design. No, Man. no notes. If if I could go back in time and I can't change like key moments in history, like I can't kill Hitler or something, I think I'd stop the Hindenburg from from exploding because it killed an entire industry or an entire subset of vehicle. If it didn't explode, there were already investors in the entire vehicle kind of like base for zeppelins and airships. And I I hate that we don't have air more airships. Every a, like we should have airship taxis for like the tops of skyscrapers. We we got to bring it back. Forget about trains. We need airships. Like do not forget about trains. In addition <laughs> to trains. No, you have to pick one as. I'm picking trains. There's no way I'm not picking trains. <laughs> Lame. <laughs> How very trains. not diesel punk of you, God. I'm all not right, so AI, at all. AI social strike team for Squadron 42. Yes, okay, right. <laughs> the narrative de narrative designer spent September working on key social scenes. This is also yes, Squadron 42. Um, on the AI side, the team polished locations and added additional life via utility behaviors. Loca uh, bleh, location worked on... include. I can't even figure out what this is. On the AI side, the team polished locations and added additional life via utility behaviors. Location worked on... Locations worked on the included... Nope. Worked on included... The locations worked on included a ship's hangar, gym, bridge, barracks, bathroom, and mess hall. Why would... Three? <laughs> Dang it. I feel like it should have Venus been using location lyrics. worked on hyphen included. Like I, I don't know. I would write differently, but I read bad apparently. Yeah, it's just the AI, you know, walking around doing random things uh, yep. uh, associated with different rooms. Yeah, lifting weights they added and utility behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 And yep. back to animation me for animation and you get one sentence on PU and then uh, yeah. a couple sentences on. Button. All right, so the animation team for the PU uh, spent most of September on the Argo Atlas alongside additional work on the Copion and other creatures, i.e. see the leaks. Um, on the Squadron 42 side, animation uh, September saw the animation team improving on the zero-G flow, so uh, zero-G push-pull, um, zero-G movement. Uh, they adjusted weapon reloading first selects uh, and how players interact with the environment to improve overall combat AI while code was updated to fix various cover bugs. Uh, the facial team progressed through the remaining animations for the game, which is nearing completion. They will then transition to improving all facial animations, starting with the key cast characters. The mocap team assisted the gameplay team with body type 2 animations and captured additional data for various gameplay story sections. You know, I don't think it's very long till they start saying, hey, even these teams are starting to like wrap up their work. Oh, yeah. If they if we even like get that, like I I can imagine the monthly reports are going to be ending soon. Um, because for the last year, they've basically been saying the same thing and they've been getting shorter and shorter and there's less in them because we can't spoil anything. And it's basically like this team worked on polishing what this team works on. And that's basically yep. what it's been for at least the six months or the last six months. <laughs> and I think it's becoming irrelevant information. Oh, another bot. Nano QQ. Boeing's already tried to recreate the legacy of the Hindenburg. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Vintage. if the assumption comes true that we are going to start the pu uh, publicity 
of Squadron 4-2 at CitizenCon, then the briefing room comes back. And I think those will be way better information than the monthly reports. And so I don't think the oh, monthly yeah, reports need to Oh, yeah, I forgot all about that. <laughs> I've never forgotten about that. Oh, that was man. Like, yeah, one of the if, best ISCs I've ever seen. They better bring those back. Um, oh. I imagine... That, um, that bot's name was Bankrupt Purple. And I have oh a purple mattress. Yeah. And I'm like, why would you want to bankrupt purple? They're a great company. I love my mattress. Hilarious. Another bot. <laughs> Actually, I got um, they have some weird names. Get them, Blizzard. Get them. Attack. So... <laughs> I think I, I I bet Jared already has everything lined up, if not already shot, for the um, briefing rooms, because um, many should know, uh, probably some don't. Uh, while the entire time that uh, the game has been being developed, uh, Jared has also been shooting a behind the scenes uh, documentary. Like he's been doing a lot more video work than he publishes on a weekly basis. So I would I would not doubt that he already has at least the topics of all the briefing room videos, if not them already shot and ready to go. All right. Uh, so now on to character art on the PU side. Uh, in September, the character art team progressed with the utility and specialist armors. I haven't heard of those since last year. Um New heads for character customizer and tasks for the IEE event. Meanwhile, the character concept artist team continued exploring fauna. I wonder if we're going to get more than... Oh, well, I hope we're going to get Kazi Grazer and Stormwall in 4.0. But I wonder if there's anything more they're not telling us. Sorry, I just had somebody join the discord and they're like oh yeah watching the latest video and it's like well we're podcasting live come hang out <laughs> we're, um, we're live right now if you want <laughs> yeah. um well we're the kazi grazers uh that they, they didn't move that no that's still in the release view for 4.0 yeah um and stormwall and... we saw flying around last year yeah um there are creatures in the leaks and lots of them yeah so I, uh, I remember one of them, and we're nowhere near where that one lives. So I wonder why it's there. Well, so the one... Hey, Speedfragger! There he is. There they are. Oh, oh. Part, of the crew, part of the crew, part of the ship. Part of the crew, part of the ship. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining, uh, coming and hanging out live. Good to see you. Um, hell, we can talk about that leak really quick. Um... If you don't like leaks, cover your ears, and then I will do this when it's time to uncover your ears. Um, and if you want to know more about the leaks, I get them in my in my Discord so you can check them out for yourself. But <laughs> I love the best comment. That's great. Yeah, uh, the sandworm is in the files. The sandworm from CitizenCon 2016 is in the leaked files it's from like 3.24.2. Like... The the Valak something. car or something like that. Valak like car. Like I can't I remember it, so how it's it said and spelled. So uh, I don't remember where I saw this, but I, I had the same thought. And then I was like, okay, I'm not crazy. But the Valakar is from Lear 3, no. where the good doctor takes place. No. Oh. Dad. The good doctor arena commander map. Which also, um, did they ever end up getting that tank battle uh, mode into uh, Good Doctor? No. No? Okay. No. So they, they have a lot more of the planet available. Not just the, the, a little, the, the building that you do the Good Doctor oh. Arena Commander map in. Yeah, they, they've said any planet you see in, in Arena Commander is a full planet. Yeah. No, it, it's there. Mm -hmm. They've done the planet work. It's done. <laughs> yeah, they have, they have painted that planet. Whether they have painted it how they want it exactly, we don't know. But yeah, there's right. a there is a there's an entire planet there, and they're working on the sandworm. It has animations and stuff like that and other things. So. And not the crappy ones we saw in two thousand <laughs> what seventeen, yeah. eighteen, two thousand six. Oh, that was two thousand sixteen. Sixteen, sixteen or seventeen? I forget which. It's not seventeen. Yeah. Yep. Probably getting a sandworm body pillow. Oh, yeah, well, where's my plushie? Uh, 
Where's my plush? No. Yeah. No. 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 Don't do okay. that. Earmuffs back off. We're we're done talking about leaks. Not that that really hit it all that much. Um. So that was animation. On to you for character art. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Totally. I'm totally ready for that. Um. <laughs> no, I did character art. You were you were distracted. That's why we started talking about uh, Fauna. Oh. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you, to Art Ships. Tell us, where is the ships? I, I do want to see more of these utility armors because I, I want to, especially for... So when we get our next um, referral code, I'm going to create another alt for just industry. And I'm going to give mm -hmm. all my Argo hey, ships to that. it. And so I want that. I want my industry character to be able to look more industry and not just the aerial, you know, sets. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, character concept art continued exploring fauna. So they're concepting even more animals. Yes. And I the imagine that that's already... because um they need they like one they have a lot of plants and they need <clears> to flesh out like they can't just have copians and and, and kazi racers everywhere they oh need yeah we to need have, a lot more variety yeah yeah they like there needs to be like five or so different things for per planet or something like it's there's gonna be a lot yep like for habitable planets like one or two maybe for like inhospitable planets yeah that like still have alien life on them because it's a game <laughs> Uh, so ship art, uh, the vehicle content mo team moved several pa vehicles into their final phases, including the RSI Polaris and several unannounced ships. See the leaks. We know what they are. Um, what they are, a couple of them are very intriguing to me and um, hint towards things that we will see at CitizenCon that um, seem to have been developed. If, if the tea leaves that I'm reading are true. It seems like another major thing has been developed um, in secret. Uh, yeah. So I not reading all the leaks. I have a, a, a theory that the uh, there's another Zeus that's done. Being the one that didn't talk about last year. Um, because that's what they did with the Rambler. Like, oh, you like the cutter? Here's another one that is live right now. You're not wrong, but it's not what you thought it was. Okay, now I'm completely confused. All right, yeah. let's do this. And you can okay. find it in the leaks, and you can see what it is. And uh, it, I don't remember I if you're into that sort of thing. thing to, I'm not. I I try. I did look up. I did look in there when the BIS pants came out, and I did kind of browse through there. Um. There's a lot of Zeus Trooper. paints. There's a lot of Zeus paints. I, I like it. Um, Dor Del and are the uh, Del. They they wouldn't be boreal stalkers. We will have boreal stalkers. We'll have jungle stalkers. No, we'll have no, desert stalkers. No, 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 no. The boreal stalker needs to be a a Microtech unique one. It was designed specifically for Microtech. Nah, retcon. I want a Damar stalker. You know, I, I want yeah. a I want a, a desert wampa. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the sand caves sure yeah you can have a desert wampa but it will be not genetically close to the boreal stalker it'll be you know whatever the and i i actually like the idea yeah um, the hairless version you know uh... <laughs> no like a completely reconcepting like make it more more uh rancor than boreal stalker oh yep i'm gonna write it <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome um, they also um, prepared to kick off another series of vehicles. To me, that suggests, um, well, they might not be meaning it that way, but it kind of feels like they mean a vehicle with variants. Yeah. So what I read that as is the is the this year's uh, the Zeus, equivalent of the Zeus. Last year, yeah. Yeah. The Spirit Zeus and whatever this year. So that's yeah. going to be the kickoff of the new thing. What's your like which? Year. Which manufacturer do you think it's going to be? Because they're going to be. The... So they've been doing a lot of misc stuff. Well, the, yeah, <laughs> a lot of misc stuff. Um, I consolidate Atlant has nowhere near enough ships. Um, 
and Argo is a crowd favorite. So one of those three. <clears throat> yeah, Bear Catner, you're not wrong. They could just, um, yeah, the the skeleton, right, the right, animation right. rig. They could basically tweak that and then reskin it to look like something, you know, different. <laughs> Literally, just shrink it how they want it to, or make it. Grow yeah, or yeah. I'm just like saying, that. in lore yeah. and in art, don't make it the Boros Docker. I don't care how they back end do it. Let's how we paste all you want. Just consolidate out. Uh, consolidate it. No, consolidate LN my Intel. <laughs> Surprise! Drake Interplanetary presents the Drake yeah. Cutlass Aluminum. You <laughs> <laughs> uh, heard of the steel? Yeah, the yeah. aluminum. God dang it! All right. Um, back Arden to you Byron. for. It's your turn. On squadron on side. Squadron sign. Art and bar environment art right yeah yep all right uh i get a whole sentence and a half environment art focused on key chapters pushing the boundaries of art and lighting for a high fidelity cinematic experience they also looked at dynamic environmental destruction and continued to flesh out planet side content for chapter seven that's it that's all you got they they are and... so done with stuff they're seeing how much further they can go with it yeah so it, they're at, they're at the the make work phase. Yeah, the they are at the, the rangers the rangers will get done when they take on the time to work on the physics of making them work. So the Blitz reason Red, we have the Sick them. There are there are several reasons why I haven't done the rangers. It's kind of the same kind of reason why we don't have building interiors this year. Um, there is more a uh, more stuff that has to get done first for um, vehicles. Resource management and engineering is a much higher priority than two-wheel vehicles. Uh, server meshing, much higher priority than two-wheel vehicles. And vehicles do have some support they need to give to server meshing. Um, I imagine post 4.0, not soon, but post 4.0, there will be kind of a lull in vehicle tech work. And that, that's the people they need for two-wheel vehicles. Um, there's still a lot of vehicle tech work to go. Uh, mm -hmm. The uh, caterpillar has to be re-teched, re-updated because the doors are supposed to go to the ground. Um, I know there's, I, I, there's, I know there's the more pods. Oh yeah, M modularity on that side. Modularity mm -hmm. as far as features like, of modularity, especially yeah. base building. That's another vehicle tech. <clears throat> uh, drones repair and refuel from ships. So the Vulcan stuff. Um. I'm sure there's features with ships that like we have now. Like heck, the um, Herald has supposedly the hard drive is supposed to come off the Herald. Um, I don't know if that's going to be actually implemented, but all the data stuff that's also much higher priority than two-wheel vehicles because two-wheel vehicles are a single series of three vehicles, even though they are a fan favorite and basically everyone loves them. Except for the people who are like, why would you have real vehicles in space? Well, screw it. Um, so it, it's a very small subset of the community that actually really likes them. Yes, we do. But there's much higher things that touch much more of the game than just these vehicles. Basically, when they implement the Ranger, we'll be just implementing the Ranger and nothing else. Sure, they'll well, I think when they, when they implement the Ranger, we'll get another two-wheeled bike. Yep. But yeah. But it like data stuff is many vehicles and many mm -hmm. parts of the game. There's not there's not gonna be missions for the Ranger and or whatever comes after the Ranger. Like it's just a vehicle. So that's they have to have enough time to basically throw away on tech. Yeah, North End Trooper, I, I don't want to go to follower only because I don't want to discourage people from coming to to watch and stuff like that and mm -hmm. you know, interacting yeah, while the while the channel's still small, um, and, and since I have a, a Blizzard attack dog, you know it, that part's fun for me. So when Blizzard says I did think about switching it, but I think Tree wants the interactions. That's the interaction I want is being able to, you know, tell Blizz my my savage Australian Chihuahua Blizzard attack. Get the bot that only he and I could see. <laughs> I love the aesthetic of a ranger in a Zeus <laughs> MR. 
Blizz Rad, you are that little monkey thing that you put. Was it Brennan G that posted the picture of that in my Discord? You know, everything what? in Australia wants to kill you. Even this little guy, he wants to. He oh, just God. can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that. That is Blizz Rad's spirit animal. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. So you turn on community. Um, the, 20 so weeks. the community team began September supporting Alpha 3.24.1. Uh, with the Argo Atlas Q&A and by gathering feedback on live releases to help fix bugs and player issues. They then made improvements to the new player guide and welcome back Pilot Page. As we look ahead, the excitement is building for CitizenCon 2954. Hype! Which is just around the corner. With only a few weeks to go until our largest annual event, we couldn't be more thrilled to meet you all in person at Manchester Central on October 19th and 20th. For those unable to attend, we'll be live streaming the show on Twitch and YouTube, so you won't miss a crumb of what is to come uh, for Star Citizen. Uh, plus, keep an eye out for our community-organized Bar Citizen events leading up to the show and an exciting esports showdown with Atmo Esports Enter Atmosphere. Get ready with a digital goodies pack which I'm hyped about. I think it looks great. I think it's probably one of the best yeah. ones we've gotten, um, or if not or the best P8, one we've right. gotten. Yeah. The uh, Looking forward to seeing what's in the, the redacted box. Um, yes. Filled with exclusive content to get you into the CitizenCon Spirit community team. Um, super looking forward to our Bar Citizen Boise event uh, the afternoon after CitizenCon ends on Sunday. Can't wait. Uh, the Bar Citizen World Tour... <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, continued in September with the community team attending events in Marinha Grande, Portugal, and San Diego, USA for TwitchCon. Lastly, the team supported yeah. Pirate Week, including the Show Us Your Plunder contest. That's a cool shot. Somebody's so, been loot goblining, and I'm here for it. I don't know how on earth they had the patience to build that. There's a bomb in the background. A what? A bomb. Oh yeah, yeah. There's size the size fives and size ten, right? The fives. Oh yeah, I didn't even see this moment. Um, Is that what's in that, the, the A one size fives, right? Yeah, uh, whatever it is. I, I don't know. I don't do bombing. I don't either. That's why I'm uh, asking. I can't remember because I because the the a the a two is supposed to be able to have the size tens and size three cluster bombs, right? And then, but we don't have the cluster bombs, right? Am I correct? And then the a one has the size fives, correct? Because we don't have the size threes yet. The cluster bombs. That would make sense. Just want to make sure I'm not. That means, losing that my means mind. size ones are really small. Um, size ones would probably be like. Wing and stuff. Um, yeah. So, because Turbulent is now a CIG office, do you think we'll get a Montreal next year? I, I think yes, and I actually, based off the cycle, would it normally have been going back to Frankfurt next year? No, because it's US EU US EU. So it would be Austin next year yeah. and then Frankfurt? Yeah. Okay. I mean, either it's Austin or Montreal. And either way, I'll go next year. <laughs> yeah. I think JJ would say a time to just have one NA, one EU spot now. I don't think so. I think they'll still tour around all their, their places. Just because, like, it... It not only is good for, um, like, it's good for community building, not just Star Citizen community, but also local community. It pushes uh, money into the local uh, community. Um, the devs, a lot of devs that are reside in those places can't go if it's, let's say, the Manchester devs. Not everyone in the office gets a free ticket to CitizenCon. But when it's in Manchester, literally two blocks down the road, they can go to it on their own dime. So a lot more devs can go when it's in their hometown. And then also you get off the same effect for, um, star Citizen community members. A lot more will be able to go and a lot easier when it's in one of the host countries that they live in. Um, yeah, I'm surprised that they still have the LA office going. It's so small. It is so small. Yeah. Um, 
I can I can also see them like dropping LA. So it'd be Austin, Montreal, Manchester, and Frankfurt. And also, it would make sense if they did Frankfurt next year too, because the Lancho Squadron. LA is legal. LA is legal and <laughs> something else, like another like remote team that doesn't actually work on the game, but works on stuff relating to the game. Because LA is expensive, and yeah, like a lot of that's why a lot of stuff really... is getting pushed out of of California. Hilariously, yeah. yeah, it's it's more of a uh, admin site than anything. Yeah. Uh, so back to you for core gameplay. Nah, let's read the long one. I right, got it. Yep. All right, core gameplay. Core gameplay began September, supporting <clears throat> the Argo. Which included unique tractor beam behavior and that the team are looking to improve and expand moving forward. As Hooray. the first game as yeah. Uh, as the game's first exosuit, it required a special technical setup, as it is neither a traditional vehicle nor a character. This posed some minor challenges when dealing with entitlement, vehicle terminals, and the law system and ship elevators. We have enjoyed seeing all the fun and creative videos featuring the Atlas gameplay feature team. For charge and drain, core gameplay and design focus are discussed whether the client-side prediction works as expected and meets expectation. So, for a lot of things, the client expects something and it will uh, it will deal with what you're supposed to see while it's pinging the server and hopefully those things, when, it, when you get a read back from the server, the expectation is one-to-one. -one. And if it's not, they need to fix something on the client. Because the client... Hey, Axis with the raid. Thanks for joining us at Axis. Siren, good to see you. Thanks Hello, for Axis. bringing your people. Uh, because everything in Star Citizen is server authoritative. So if the client misjudges what's supposed to happen, you'll get that snapping or some uh, desync. So yeah, the, the, the server will auto-correct you. <laughs> yes, violently. Um, so having client-side prediction work as expected, is, is very important. Uh, from this, they improved how connections between the multi-tool and resource containers are handled, ensuring that they correctly deal with edge cases and multiple targets. Mission support continued too, including states, state changes based on resource container occupancy. Don't know what that means. All I can think of is hmm. different stuff changes at the like if you fill a container 10, 50, 95 to 100%. Yeah. Um, state changes in like, you know, hey, you add fuel, you add energy, it changes the appearance and how it's functioning and stuff. You know, Most is mission it, support. Yeah. Uh, for a mission, so like, like you have a job to refuel or recharge this. Mm -hmm. And so when you recharge it, you know, with charge and drain or, or something similar, you know, it starts working again. You know, or or lights up and makes sounds and you know, all that stuff. But if, I'd also you know, imagine. But if there's a resource and... container like delivering, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, we don't have fuel consumption yet, but they could fake it with you dropping in like a, a little one eighth SCU box and hooray! Now you have fuel. What do you mean we don't have fuel yet? We don't have fuel consumption yet. It's not a not a for... thing for resource network. The, or for power even points. in four oh yep your oh. ship concern can consumes fuel for movement your power plant and other systems uh your power plant and everything following that does not consume consume fuel not yet interesting i didn't know that yep yeah when we were re-watching all the um scls mm -hmm. uh for like the last year going uh, coming up to now for um, looking at stuff. That was one thing that, um, oh gosh, what's his name with the glasses and the accent? Um, who's in charge of engineering? He said um, that... Uh, so about storing water, there is um, ice and things in the game. And yeah, there is liquid containers. Yeah, pressurized ice, I think it is. So pressurized ice is something not ice storage. Pressurized ice is like the hydrogen storage. Oh, okay. 
Oh yeah, the Siren. Always, always appreciate the raid. Always glad to have you come hang out, listen, chat, and everything. Talk Star Citizen. You know, you're, you oh. and and your people are always, always welcome. More the merrier. I went on, you know, the college course of deep wiki reads of what the heck pressurized ice is, um, and it actually is a substance used to store other things. Huh. Because you can make a lattice of pressurized ice. It's not called pressurized ice. It's called ice two. Um, and you can actually store things in an inert state in it. So. Interesting. It may be a way that stations store hydrogen instead of big exploding tanks. That's not fun. <laughs> uh, let's see, where was I? Um, Bioaccumulation Progress 2. I love the sound of that. Yeah. With improvement support... I don't like the way you said that. <laughs> With no, I'm, I'm excited about it too. Like, the... the 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 it, it like when your armor gets accumulation and other bits of you do not you know of, of like for snow mm-hmm. yeah i also think um, it also has something uh something to do with um like tree spawning and crevices and, and like in the little pockets that's more of a distribution thing so um with improvement support for wetness visit Vis- God dang it. Vis- visualization. Visualization. I can't, I can't today. And iteration. Or ir- ir- irradiation? Iteration. Yep. Inter- okay, so I got it right the first time. Including a new debug tool for degradation. God dang it, Sanjay. Yeah, that was a hard uh- sentence. <laughs> The team then continued converting uh, markers to use the entity subscription service, which will support markers at, geez, marker as server boundaries when required. September saw further work on jump points, including improvements to the tunnel wall uh, forces and the failure behavior, aka how most of us are going to exit at jump points. The team also expanded various designer control values to better control how the jump point o- uh, jump point opening and traversal sequences is triggered. Alongside this, improved visuals were added to the tunnel exit. Gameplay-wise, jump drives now use quantum fuel in the tunnel. Fuel re- requirements is per jump, though each jump drive or each drive has an efficiency multiplier. Very cool. Um, what are we? What are we? What are we, what are we doing? Blizzard just said, Tree is just waiting to accumulate flesh on his doctor's gown. And oh, I made God. this gif. This is from the the preview from the um, the, the, the art Hacks preview. One, right? Yeah, from the Grimhex Hospital. <laughs> I found this on the artist who did this and did the, you know, all this for the Grimhex Hospital. He posted this so video. Have a screaming in the background? This was uh, on his art station. And so I made it a gif and it's um, in, my, in my Discord. Nice. <laughs> yes. Uh, Sorry. Ch- 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 <laughs> yeah, gameplay wise. Oh, that's that, that much fun. IFCS now takes time to come back online after a jump. Great. So we're even more sitting ducks. Um, yeah. Improvements were also made to the camera and screen effect code, while various stable stability, uh, stability, very while various stability flow blockers, and performance issues were dealt with. Jump points are currently with QA for testing, a.k.a. they're basically done. Uh, Newest bugs were fixed for resource network engineering, including some related to deleting entities not being removed correctly from the resource host. Unnecessary. When stuff gets destroyed, it gets removed. They have solved issues where items with minimum power requirements were not correctly assigned power as part of the default preset and fixed items with incorrect component or yeah, components being added to the resource network, which could result in later crashes. Work began on item block out bindings or box out bindings. When clicking on items in a 3D panel view will open with its details. Sure. 
Um, I imagine that's just stuff in the. Are you, are you, what, what, what you doing, bud? <laughs> Dell says no <laughs> random woman's body. Not accurate. So this is during what? the pyro playground. And I don't have the first clip, but I'll explain why this is funny. Oh, was I upside down? I was upside down the whole time. Ah! Oh, no! I don't know what the box <laughs> Why did what? the Oh, I saw that. Um, I wasn't moving. Oh, That's a roasted lame. tree. Super lame. All the stuff on the ship. Oh. I had looted a lot of stuff. Or landing zone? I hadn't landed yet. I was. Yeah. Oh well, it's it's EPTU or whatever. Oh my God, there's a body. Oh. There's another. <laughs> Jesus. Did you bring <laughs> the body with you through regen? I threw it out of the ship. I swear I threw it out of the ship. But there's another. All right, that's it. Trees haunted. <laughs> there's another female corpse and nothing but her underwear in my hat. <laughs> <laughs> so we were we were at an outpost it was during the pyro playground we were at an outpost it was like well, it was me and Dell, i think ghost and uh a few other people that we play with on a regular basis and i had um oh god what what happened i <laughs> I, I i don't know if it was a glitch or something but i i brought a, a a player care. I found a player character's body at an outpost, and so I brought it over to my C8R to strip it of its gear and put the gear in my storage and you know loot it. And well, I, I I dragged it up onto the the med bed in the C8R, and then like my screen glitched out. I don't remember what happened for for some reason when I went to interact it it it, it glitched out, and then when my like. And it wasn't my, my screen, like my actual computer, but like the, the game glitched out black. And then it turned back on, and all of a sudden, the player character was had been stripped of their stuff. It was all gone. I don't know where it went, but it was just it a, a, a body. The player respawns. Yeah, well, the, <laughs> so all their gear, all, all the gear just disappeared, and there's a female body lying there on the bed of the C8R dead in nothing but their underwear. <laughs> I was like, ah, God, what it surprised the hell of me. Because it went from black screen to, oh, there's <laughs> there's a dead woman <laughs> nothing but her underwear in front of me. And then, of course, we returned to the station with the loot I'd gotten from us rampaging around. And, of course, like, I got killed by a, a, a missile turret from the station randomly firing. You know, they do that. And so <laughs> I respawned at the station and there's another, there's another body, like not two minutes later, just randomly appearing. Oh, and so boy. we had people, I was streaming, there was people watching the stream, there was people watching in Discord because I was streaming to Discord, and people were just like, what is going on? How does this keep happening? And I'm like, it's not me. So that's the context. It's so crazy we're less than three months out, we're like we're two months out from Pyro. Mm-hmm. So crazy. Uh, let's see. Next up is the devs solved issues where items with minimum power. I read that one. Do, 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 do. Worked on work began on item block. I already read that one. I apparently put my marker at the wrong spot. Uh, the team also implemented or improved the item destruction and repair behavior. When implemented, uh, when a player destroys an item, it will be removed from the network and added back if the player repairs it or if it is repaired. Player set values on it, on or players values for off and on and throttle will persist through death and repair too. Uh, progress continued on radar and scanning, including delta signatures. And uh, this includes temporary AR markers that will show when detecting a delta signature. Delta basically meaning something is not the background. Um, I lost my place. If the contact is pinned or locked, the existing AR marker will uh, AR marker updates temporarily. New UI buildings, yeah, building bindings were also added. You no, know, were added to enable the designers to customize the player facing UI. In related development, the radar jammer will now present prevent scan waves. 
Oh, so basically we do a. I imagine that's just the, what we have now, the tab. So if you have a jammer nearby, you just can't do tab or ping. Yeah, or I mean, however it ends up working out with the new system, right? You know, it, it like it'll just, it, it, like you'll go to do it and nothing will happen, or not you won't get any feedback or something like that. You you won't be able to get signatures or or What's maybe the, get signatures. It, you can't, like yeah. you can't even do the wave. Prevents scan waves. Yeah. Yep. So I imagine it's a lot like the, you know, uh. The quantum dampener, like you just can't jump, mm -hmm. you just can't, you can't scan. It's nice that they already uh, are. They're not only building radar the gameplay, and the counter scanning, gameplay. but yeah, the counter gameplay with it. Yep. Very nice. While FPS radar and scanning went through various rounds of playtesting and reviews to improve the overall experience. I mean, they're they're pretty much. Yeah, this is going to be a big feature of CG, uh, at CisonCon. And as we talked about earlier, um, getting in <laughs> as soon as possible to um, experimental mode, then out for I think they said we're not getting like we're probably not getting the experimental mode till 4.0. So I'd imagine, though, that we're getting scanning in 4.1. If if not, they, if they don't accelerate their ideas to get experimental mode into 3, 2, 4, 2. Yeah, I think that that's probably the goal if they're trying to get into get it into the patch before 4.0. But I, I think and they it they probably would helps that it's at well, yeah, I think we'd already have knowledge of they're trying to get the experimental mode in there. Yeah. As they said, I mean, they like, might... we're, we're, we are nearing completion of PTU for 3242. Mm -hmm. hmm. like or it, maybe it's, it'll be it's... in, I don't know. Because that's, yeah. I mean, that's what they said in the May and August month report, you know, and it sounds mm -hmm. like it's really far along. Yeah. Yeah, it, it feels like we're going to get a much more fleshed out version of scanning when that goes to experimental mode than we did for um, it, uh, engineering when that went to experimental mode. I lost my place again. Uh, continuous release support was provided for the transit and improved debugging tools. A fallback for when teleporting out of transit fails. Okay. Uh, improvements to how transit data is stored in object containers and refactored transit network visual visualizer. I imagine that's all in, in support of the new transit refactor for server mission. The team also implemented off alerts for weapons, coolers, radars, thrusters, and quantum drives alongside misfire alerts for power plants. Uh, power plants, weapons, and thrusters and shields. For Maelstrom, the devs provide support for triggering... The triggering of particle effects alongside adding support for cinematic sequences and making parts or marking parts as critical when a crucial part reaches zero and uh, zero integrity. The whole object will be destroyed or disabled or destroyed in the future. Uh, yeah, will be disabled or destroyed in the future. This will also tie into the resource network. The mission system refactor mentioned in the previous reports continued throughout September. Now missions can be played through to completion using the full mission service implementation. While medical and rescue beacons are functional using the new system too. Nice. I so really hope we get a a much more in-depth demo of Maelstrom. Because whereas before they just showed things breaking apart, mm -hmm. I want to see like you know, I want to see it not breaking apart. I want to see like how you things want to see work not enough damage. Yeah, I want yeah, the, the the before that when when things are damaged but not broken, you know, how that affects, you know, systems even if they have to like show like hey, this is what we're going for, not what we have yet, you know, that sort of thing, but yeah. Um, yep. Um doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, it's nice to see that basically we're they're now on about on par with the service system. And that's now not on the DGS, so that's interesting, mm -hmm. which is what it needs to be for server mission. 
Yep. It need, it needs to be not on the DGS is what I mean. Um, I wonder if that affords them any new functionality that can now be done because it's not on the DGS. Yeah, just uh, and, and it depends on what uh, what they've implemented with the refactor, you know. Early on, you know, in, yeah. in terms of like, I just mean like, and the, yeah, they refactored it to make it work for server meshing. But what else yeah. have they built into that refactor for things that they know they need going forward? You know, um, because like obviously they have a time constraint, so like how much right. time do they not only devote to refactoring what they needed, but also what they need for beyond 4.0? Right, that's what I mean. Like, in a theoretical sense, is there any any affordances that they now can work towards that being its own service will give them ability mm -hmm. to do that they couldn't have done with a DGS implementation of the mission system. Yeah. It's not something that we can answer right now. That is something that I would basically have to go to who's he, what's his face. Um, I want to say Eli, his name's not Eli. Mission guy. What's his name? Oh, um, Oh gosh. He and Jared have a hilarious relationship. Um uh, Elliot, yeah, Elliot, Elliot. Thank Baldwin. you. Thank you so much. Yes, Elliot. Um that's something like only he and whatever Eli. Team do. You were you were Eli close to yeah, Eli. Yeah, Eli I was very it. close. <laughs> I, that's yeah. Good job, Brain. You got halfway there. Um so Maybe something I maybe something I can put like in the F the devs on spectrum. Uh, for contact prerequisite, the team added the option to set local availability, such as landing zone, moon settlement, or distribution center. Design can now also generate multiple contracts with different overrides. Uh, so what this means is I forget who summed it up where, but this is specifically on where you can accept missions. So you can accept them. Let some missions can only be accepted when you're in a certain locale, and you can then override. So let's say you want you're in Microtech. You're not pro. You can, with this implementation, they can say, "Hey, we're not going to give you a bounty hunting mission in Hurston or Art Corp or near the jump point things." This is specifically you have to for go there first. Around this point, yeah, you have to yep. go there. Then you can find local things. And obviously, there can be some overrides. Like for hauling missions, obviously, bigger hauling missions can be. Uh, have a wider cast for where they can be picked up. I just hope they add haul cargo hauling mission filters. Yes, for the love of I God. I want to be able to filter by pickup or drop off locations. Mm -hmm. That would make it so much easier. That's why uh, Space Coder is doing that thing is to help. Well, with I think that. that's for commodity, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, it looks no, like that is, no, that is, that is, no, that is route. That is mission route. Yeah, no, yeah. you're right. You're right. That is missions. Nice. That will actually be helped because that was a lot of commodity ones that do that. Um, mm -hmm. UEX, not UEX, is it? Is it UEX? No, I, uh, I don't know. I, I don't commodity. I do not. <laughs> not my thing. It is UEX. UEX is a great tool for commodity trading, which I haven't done in months since I've been doing hauling. I love UEX. And why the heck did it spawn on light mode? Thank you. I love UEX. UEX is great. And I completely lost where I was. Oh, that's right. Because I was in a different window. Uh, second to right. last paragraph. No, I meant that I lost the window. Oh. The team spent considerable time in September improving and fixing various issues with cargo gameplay, including hangar performance, server crash, uh, recovery bugs, Commodity trading and sell orders. A team is currently assessing how the development and delivery of Alpha 324's cargo feature went, including quality of life improvements they'd like to implement before taking on the next stages. Like or taking vehicles the next in freight elevators. Make it there, happen. There Come is on, a guys. laundry list. The, I, I cannot stress this enough. The Chad McKinney SCL was so good. Yeah, I need to uh, rewatch that a third time. <laughs> It it was so good, like that and the Benoit one after it were just a highlight of the year, absolutely highlights of the year. Um, it, it really gave you a, a in on, like a lot of the 
a lot of the cargo people and hangar people that were like really waiting on these features were like, hey, we're not happy with this, this, and this. And Chad's like, yeah, me too. <laughs> it's great. It was a great show. <laughs> All right, then on to the very long and arduous one to read. You got the economy team. Yes, yeah, feel for me. Economy <laughs> for the PU. The economy team continued their ongoing work on Pyro and began implementing some of the balance changes mentioned in previous monthly reports. Wow, did you did you make it? Are you okay? Do you need yep, a minute? I'm recovering. <laughs> Do you need a blanket? <laughs> oh boy. And then gameplay story. Yeah, is there anything interesting in the economy? No, they've just been like balancing the mission. We're doing a gerb. <laughs> We're doing all a gerb. <laughs> all right, gameplay, gameplay story, story for Squadron 42. Gameplay story's priority in September was supporting wire efforts to polish. Everything is just going to expound on that, but like, that's, been <laughs> that's what the entire monthly report is. We did gerb. Uh, alongside this, they used the new mocap to significantly significantly improve two scenes in Chapter 4. The team also looked closely at Chapter 5. Uh, restructuring a complex scene featuring three characters meeting with variable timing. Interesting. This previously looked like disjointed. Uh, this previously looked a little disjointed. Uh, depending on the timing of how, uh, meeting. However, following reorganization and new mocap, the scene is looking much better and is far more robust, the gameplay, uh, gameplay story team. Uh, a number of scenes in Chapter 3 were blocked by a problem with the level, which the devs solved by submitting a set of fix. Following this, numerous updates were submitted and resolved. Uh, gameplay story continued making... St Steady progress on additional scenes in Chapter 15, implementing a significant amount of performance captured data. So, like, as I've said with, like, every time we read something Squadron this uh, this time, like, it, it's it's basically we're, like, you know, obviously polishing. It's it's like we're, we're, do, we're, we're doing the last little things, but it is still by no means done. Yeah, polishing like, not, takes time. Yeah, they're, they're not done with it. There's obviously stuff to do. There's obviously stuff, like, polish is all about quality. Mm -hmm. And they could spend literally forever on this quality, but they have a bar they're aiming for. When that bar is hit, we will have the game out. No sooner, no longer. They will set a date. Like for the for the narrative of society, this is gonna sound really weird. But I hope they set a date, I hope they miss a date, and then I hope they release it so shortly after. Like a month or two after their their initial whatever they say at CitizenCon. That is my hope. I hope they don't not, not... for 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 my sake and my mental health. I don't want them to delay it again, even if it's two weeks. Right, like a normal studio, exactly, like a normal studio. Uh, but also, <laughs> but they've like, already done that. At last, so there are those who will make a story because uh, Squadron is coming out. Not everyone likes Star System or Squadron Four Two. So to get both sides of the coin, you have the people who will say, Squadron's coming out, here's a great game to play. But then you also say, oh, they missed a day. So you have all those haters also making stories about Squadron. It's just winning. It's just winning. So. Uh, and then we have locations on the PU side. Another very long one for, for, for Trey. I know. I'm struggling here. The Landing Zone team continued to push toward Alpha 4.0, polishing and optimizing content and supporting the design team and making Pyro as distinct as possible. I think it's hilarious the Landing Zone team is working on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, It's one thing Pyro has none of. I feel like the landing zone team is probably doing work in the major locations. It's also like the it, Leo the landing zone stations. Team is just, landing zone team is just a location team. Mm -hmm. Like they're the location artists. It doesn't like it's only because they don't have landing zones to work on. They're not doing mm -hmm. landing zones. Like they are, they are just their name. Dev. Yeah. I imagine if they change their name, it'll just go like they'll just roll in all of the um, location devs into a single team. Mm -hmm. Like, it'll just be like, I don't know, location team. 
I think uh, it's just back a subset. to you for mission design, also on the PU. All right. Uh, mission design continued working on location repair missions, moving some of them into a handyman archetype. I am also... so hyped for this. My my character's dad is a handyman for my Zero to Hero streams, and I can't wait to follow in his footsteps in-game and do that, do that kind of work. I imagine, uh, Q, there's a lot of people that are in your camp with not caring about Squadron. Um, they started in 2012 with Squadron and Star Citizen at the same time. Um... So there's been a lot of people waiting way longer for, for Squadron than for Star Citizen. I mean, um, the, the focus has been on Star Citizen for over a year now. Yeah. So, um, and uh, we talked about this before, but even when the focus was on Squadron, the bulk of that focus was on things that were shared. Like every... like no matter how you slice it, everything that they were aiming yeah. to deliver, you know, from citizen con going forward were shared features that were de developed in squadron. And we wouldn't be getting them in the PU now if they hadn't developed them in uh, behind the, the iron curtain of squadron yeah. 42. So and like Dale said, even if you're squadron not 42 interested in squadron, was... squadron 42 development helps star citizen development. Yeah. Like Dell said, like squadron 42 was what sold star citizen in, the, in yeah. the beginning it's what cr is is known for yeah. and what he where he made his name like honestly like there are like i said lots of people in your camp uh i already have at least three playthroughs planned for squad and for two though but yeah i imagine a lot of people are just waiting for the current mmo of star citizen because squadron's been now well, in the back burner working away and they haven't heard much about it and Star Citizen is this big flashy thing that, you know, lights up uh, tons of news news orgs every month or so. So it's much more in people's faces. Yeah, we're we are past that point where the the people who would be coming back to Star Citizen from focusing on Squadron who were working on Star Citizen and Squadron features. That's the thing. They were so they were still working on Star Citizen. They just weren't releasing anything for Star Citizen. They were they were nose to the grindstone for three years working on those features, not having to put them out and rush them out to a patch. Um, and so the people who are left on Squadron aren't coming over to the PU. And so what we have now is what we're going to get other than new people getting hired. So like the, that change that you guys are talking about has already occurred. Yep. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, so moving on. Earlier for SC concept and back. What was the what was the star system concept? Because the what concept? Because the Kickstarter only has squadron concepts. Anyway, uh, they also reviewed Blockade Runner global event, looking at the future, uh, looking at future tweaks and fixing and an issue preventing some ships from being filled with cargo. This was due to a uh, race condition with how cargo is spawned in the game code. And basically this this wrecked the final phase of the uh, event every time I tried it. Uh, let's see. Further tweaks to cargo hauling missions were made, including the possibility of removing negative reputation hits for banning the mission while keeping punishment for failing. And this is already in 3.42, I believe. Yep. Um, Hooray! Is, yeah, because there's a lot of bugs and things that will make you abandon a mission, but not fail a mission. Failing well, is, is purposely screwing up. Well, and especially until we get the mission refactor in. This is absolutely yeah. necessary because even if you do crash if you 30 recovery, K. yeah, yeah, well, yeah if, if, if you 30k but you stay within the game and you maintain your connection to the replication layer, well, well the server you were on was toast and the server yeah. had authority over the missions. And so now it won't be. No, nope, now it won't be. And so it, it will survive through a 30k. It will survive, you know, missions will persist as you move between servers, which is why they don't work in the, the server meshing test, so. 
Yeah. I mean, transit stuff trailer, is very important too. But, you know. Makes sense that you'd yeah, need more. Yeah. If I if I had to pick, definitely the mission refactor is more important for 4.0 than the transit refactor, because transit we're we're not we're not moving between servers via transit yet in 4.0 with static server meshing and dynamic yeah. for sure. So I don't think there, I don't the think there are any system, aspects of the. Well, the transit system needs to be reworked because of unloading things. It has problems with unloading. Unloading things. Yeah, when when the server goes to sleep, when no one's around, um, it messes up how the transit system works. That's one of the reasons why. Oh, the gotcha. Don't work. Yeah, the the yeah when they stream back in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because even so, and that's as an explanation. The server side object container streaming still is a thing in server meshing. It's it's part. That's why they got it in. It's required for server meshing, because even if no one is in the zones that a server is responsible for, in you know, say four servers with five hundred players, and one server is managing, I don't know, all the space stations or something like that. Uh, and they all everybody leaves you know during a low concurrency environment then when people come back in and you know that that server will stream those environments out and it will you know it'll go into like i don't know almost like uh like a sleep mode if nobody's on that server it won't power down it won't shut itself down as soon as someone you know moves into its environment or moves towards it you know then it'll you know start streaming all the things back in but in order to stream a stage, you know, uh, elevators back in and get those working, you have to have the transit factor. So yeah, you're right. Yeah, that that yeah. aspect is important because otherwise, boy, you think elevators are fucked now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that's why uh, we have the elevator problem in the testing uh, test channel. Yep. Uh, because transit is yeah, not done yet. Yeah, for the um, all the different uh, uh, all the stations, it's system the ATC Lagrange or the stations. ATC is its own thing. Transit system is specifically um, the space buses, or uh, space trains, and the elevators. So every transit elevator you ride, yep. yep, is also transit. Every train you ride is also transit. Yeah, I don't think freight elevators work the same way, but I think that they're probably going to be. Because freight elevators are a, a a different system than the transit elevators. But, so yeah, that's the squadron demo. That is not the star system as a squadron thing. Yes, he says MMO, but everything that is shown is squadron. But yeah, well, and so Cindy, um, but with ATC. ATC is going to be its own service as well. Um, I don't. We haven't gotten an update on the ATC service, but it is supposed to be within with server meshing, separated from the server and a shard based service, not a um, server based service. Back then, PU was the multiplayer out on Squadron. Eh, sort of. If you go back and read the original, um, original po original Kickstarter, they are basically two sides of the same coin. Um, you were originally supposed to be able to play Star Citizen and fly to your to the start point of Squadron Forty Two and start it that way. They even um, talked about co-op back in the day. Yeah, so co-op like, was alive for a while. Um, and it's only right as they basically went for the three year hiatus on squadron stuff that that kind of fell apart. And they said, eh, we're not really uh, at a point where we can add that. And it will it will cause more dev time than we want to spend on it because they'd have to rebalance all the encounters and things. Speed so. are you when you say is it to have fast responding? Are you talking about elevators respond to you fast or like. Because so some of it response time might be interaction delays due to server degradation. Oh, ATC. So yeah, the, I mean, well, it won't always respond to you. It, they should respond to you more quickly. Yes, because, but it's because a lot of times there is a cues, but yeah, right now ATC's performance is beholden to server performance. And so if your server is performing like shit, ATC will perform like shit. 
when it's off the server and it's run as its own separate service, then it won't be beholden yeah. to server performance, although a lot of that would be addressed um, by server meshing. But you don't want to have, with dynamic server meshing and a server, you know, right now it might have authority for a space station, you know, with ATC, and then, you know, things might change and then it won't. And so it, the ATC needs to work regardless of which server is managing uh, a, a a system a, a location with ATC functionality. Yeah. They, they'll, they'll ha- it, it'll be its own service within the shard. Kinda yeah. Like the a shard will have, um, you know, a shard manager service and the Atlas service and everything like. That it'll be its own service within the shard to handle all ATC transactions for that shard, regardless of how many people are on it or how many servers are within it and replication layers. Um, it will that service will handle that that demand. The mission system refactor continued, uh, which included seventeen thousand no seventeen hundred mission records for Stanton alone. Part of the refactor is streamlined content set up so that the devs don't have to manage that number of records going forward. This refactor won't change how players interact with missions or change gameplay. It's predominantly a back-end refactor to ensure everything works with server meshing. Work also began on an improvement to new player experience that accommodates more fundamental game mechanics, for example, teaching players about item banks, freight elevators, and respawn flow. Component repair, gameplay, and master modes, and more. There are going to be then, so many little tutorial things yep. that the game is going to have to teach people. I, I just hope they 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 do it based off of like not only because I, I talked about this with Lore equals gameplay because they had an article about uh, the Rust Society, and I hope they will use organizations. Mm-hmm to introduce those tutorials to those non base mechanics. Like it's one thing to teach people like how to do the basics of flying their ship, but in terms of like the, the, the career mechanics, you know, you're mining, yeah. you're salvaging. I hope they'll use the organizations to you get introduced to the organization. You start building rep. They give you missions, you know, but you know, here, let us teach you first. I would even and really here's like... your first salvage, you know, laser, your first, um, yeah. I would really like them to do like physical representation. So like there's like a Shubin representative at a desk waiting to give new players their first uh, mining mission. Mm-hmm. Like, Hey, you're, <laughs> I, you're in, are you interested in mining? I got this job with Shubin interstellar for you. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the wild lines for that would be fun too. Yeah. All right. Uh, back to you for narrative. And I have to be right back. Is it squadron narrative or PU? Uh, starts with PU, then goes to squadron. Okay. Now, the narrative team continued their support for Alpha 4.0's upcoming missions. They also provided text for a really exciting... <clears throat> pardon me. Excuse me. Uh, uh, provided text for a really exciting upcoming mission. Pretty sure this is the one that Dell and I were talking about in the leaks in my channel. Um, it sounds very interesting. I am intrigued. Uh, narrative then supported characters by reviewing the costumes for Pyro's NPCs to ensure the various groups feel narratively consistent and appropriate for the location. There were extensive meetings with the branding and environment teams to talk over some of the environmental set dressing for upcoming areas. The team also released a new lore makers where they answered community questions from the forum. I need to cover that on lore equals gameplay. A uh, Whitley's guide that explored the history of the Asperia Prowler and another batch of Galactopedia entries. Now, narrative for Squadron 42, following improvements to the scanning mechanic. Ooh, scanning's coming, folks. Radar and scanning is coming. The narrative team spent time fleshing out information for corpses that players will encounter during the game. Why do I need information? I can do it myself. I, I know about corpses. Uh, 
Um, they, this also exposed some improvements to how scanning information is applied so that it can be properly localized into other languages. You know, how do we translate this into, oh shit, a body. <laughs> uh, additionally, the team had several meetings to perform a mo uh, moment by moment analysis of one of the mo more narratively intense levels um, to refine the dialogue, environmental storytelling and enemy behaviors to ensure they all work together. This resulted in various adjustments, including the timing of specific dialogue triggers and the location of certain props. The team also wrote several dialogue lines for automated systems that play in one of the chapters to contribute to creating the proper narrative atmosphere. After reading the monthly reports for Squadron 42 for so long, it's been so long, 84 years, I am just very intrigued to see the level of polish and... Uh, that the game has received. And, you know, after playing Star Wars Outlaws and enjoying Star Wars Outlaws, but realizing that thing needed twice as long in the development to be a great game. Um, it, there are so many glaring holes. They put all their, their skill points into world building, you know, and, and, and narrative, um, and not enough into gameplay. Um, you know, and gameplay systems. Um, with Star Squadron 42 having had so much time for polish and so much attention to detail, I'm looking forward to seeing the contrast between Squadron 42 and other games that have come out. Um, you know, space or otherwise. Wonder if we will get the loading graphic as a placeholder for scanning. Oh yeah, and the fix the turtles quantum range the um, uh, the terrapin. Yeah, they well, and so they they uh, they are rebalancing the quantum fuel economy within three twenty four dot two. I don't know what the extent of that is though. I'll have to look forward to to seeing what those changes are. Yeah, but you're not wrong. The uh, feels like a carrier base scout. Um, you know, the question is, will they leave it like that until we have things to carry it? But yeah, we'll find it more about fuel tomorrow per per Wikipedia. Yeah, I, I'm. I love my Rambler, but I have my Rambler for. Uh, my cutter rambler for um, my zero to hero gameplay, but I think the the scout will be a good, a really great way to introduce people to radar and scanning and how that how that works in the universe and and why why the what you're scanning for is important and why that information is useful. I don't think the turtle was ever supposed to be long range. I don't know. I'd have to go back. I, I'm not spun up on everything about the turtle, about the terrapin. Yeah, who knows, Sandy Sanderson, uh, about you know redundancy and stuff. You know, it'll be interesting to see. Okay. I did the narrative, so it's back to you for online, online technology. technology. All right. The online services team began September working on features for Alpha 4.0, including the updated mission and marker system. Task also uh, included part two of the backend social services refactor, which replaces some older diffusion services with grpc services and add quality of life updates what that all entails they don't say uh, the second half of the month involved design work for a new sir or for new services live tools kicked off a new feature to provide better access management to hex based on or hex based on various user permissions ongoing work involved enabling the ability to display inventories in the network operations center so that's something for the devs. Uh, throughout September, the network team prepared to bring server meshing to the PU. 
this includes or quote this includes a new series of tests on the tech preview channel which we've been working on where we're pushing our player counts higher than ever to stress the system and rapidly iterate with this performance with performance improvements and bug fixes network team they also supported various gameplay teams helping them to get their features uh, server meshing ready and improve robustness of authority transfers between servers. Hopefully one of those new services that they're designing is um, orgs. <laughs> yeah. Included part two of the backend social services refactor. Interesting. I'm, I'm interested to see, to hear more about what all that entails and how it affects us. If it's social you know, services, I so. I wonder if orgs are going to be a uh, part of CitizenCon. Could be. I mean, it was part of the road to release. So. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, you God bot, damn it! By the way, another bot. Get him. And that one made it through. Get him, Blizzard. Get him. Wake up. <laughs> yeah. So well. So the the Terrabin, and I'm. I have it pulled up right now. Um, a law says a long range explorer, and you have to keep that in context with its size. It can only be so long range based off its size. So I would it's, imagine it's going to be long range relevant to other ships of its size. And it's yeah, hard. I imagine the Terrapin will be long range, just like the same kind of range the Vanguard is. Yeah, give or take. Because the Vanguard is a long range fighter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's still a fighter, would... you know, but yeah, yeah. It's, it, compared to other fighters of its size, it will have greater range. You're, right. you're not going to see a, something the size of a Terrapin having greater range than a ship that's an entirely larger size class than it. Yeah, the Odyssey would definitely um, outrange the Turtle. Absolutely freaking lovely. Yeah. God damn it, bots, let me nap. No sleep, for you. <laughs> no rest. I the can do it too. I just like seeing begun. you do it. Bloodless sirloin. So it would be a well done sirloin. You, you know. <laughs> uh, and I think we're uh, back to you for UI. Yep, UI, and it's just on. Uh, yep, just it, is it on both. Okay. Yep. Uh, the UI team focused on multiple screens for the Pyro system while continuing close collaboration with the core gameplay pillar on jump points and the resource network. They also reworked each manufacturer, uh, manufacturer's vehicle huds and MFTs. Reworked each, but we're only getting some. Hmm? Yes. Because we still have several manufacturers to go. But they said they reworked each. And it's like, well, but we don't have each. We only have yeah. some of them. Yeah, so some of them aren't done yet. Reworked, though. Just because it says they That's reworked something. each of them doesn't mean they're 100% on all of them. Mm, they 100% okay. at four of them, and they, you know, 50 to 85% at the other ones. Hopefully we'll get the rest of them before them. the end of the year. Yeah, uh, I giving them would. unique colors and a, a new layout to reduce screen clutter and improve uh, usability. And oh man, they look good. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, the team streamlined the multi-tool UI to be more straightforward without the need for floating elements. It's interesting that they that got one. rid of the aim down sight. And I liked the floating elements. I liked. The I did default. too. I yeah. haven't played with it uh, yet. I've only seen other people play with it, and I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah, so those asking, 1.0 is release. Uh, we seem to be, like Dell saying, skip beta uh, because we're doing alpha and beta at the same time. We'll just have a lot slower additional things added to the game as we crack down on 1.0. Um, we're not in that sprint yet. We are still very much in the alpha stage where we're still adding a whole bunch of stuff. But I imagine features will slow down as we try and fix the features that we already have. Uh, so we'll have more of a, a a fade between alpha to release instead of a defined beta period. Beta is balance and polishing. 
balance and polish. You, yep. All your, your features and tech are in, and now you're just balance and polishing it. Yeah. And they're if we're doing, doing a that alpha? right now as they go. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of back you know, the work to do on things that are older but are, are still the 1.0 version. Um, you know, there's going to be more things to add, but the, the list of things to add is getting shorter. So as that list gets shorter, more and more stuff is going to be getting polished leading up yeah. to 1.0. Yeah, if we were doing a true alpha, they wouldn't bother fixing a whole bunch of stuff. If it worked even vaguely, they just move on. But because they are running a live game, they're also doing a bit of beta bug fixing and balancing to make sure the current live experience is decent. Yeah. And Nano QQ, I guess I'm saying it right. Um, yeah, all the quantum tra quantum fuel and, uh, you know, and, and even hydrogen fuel is going to continue to get balanced as we get more systems because, yeah. um, and just to remind everybody, Pyro is a small system. Pyro is small. It's bigger than Stanton. It's still small. And so things are going to be different. And I really think we're going to see um, for quantum travel an acceleration mechanic. So within a the, the distance of the jump, you can only reach a certain speed you know, based off your, your ship and your drives and all that. So if you're making a much longer jump with a much larger ship, you can achieve a much higher speed in order to cross that distance, but you can't achieve a much higher speed in a short jump. So if you were crossing, you know, trying to cross a null, which is 120 AU versus crossing Stanton, you know, if you're, you're making the, the big jump and going as far as your quantum fuel tank will let you go across null, you'll be able to achieve a higher speed and, and just, and, and thus, cross a much larger distance than you would in Stanton. You know, it's kind of like you know, if you were, you know, uh, trying to accelerate, you know, on a, you know going, you know, a, a, you know, not even a quarter mile, you know, a, a, you know, tenth of a mile versus accelerating over a mile, you know, um, like with a, can, a semi truck. You can have a subsonic plane anywhere, yeah. but you can only drive a, uh, supersonic plane over international waters mm -hmm. and you you know you, you reach that top point you know at, at some point but then you have to essentially decelerate you know during the jump even though there's not you know actually acceleration and deceleration but it's you know in terms of like distance being crossed so you you, you accelerate to the peak and then you come down essentially um i think that's how they will balance that and make it so that way small systems don't feel just you know stupid small you can't jump across stanton in, in you know 1.4 seconds because you're doing the same speed that you would do to get across uh null in 12 minutes 15 minutes um you know but to, to make those big systems still feel big but the small systems not feel you know silly small Uh, right. and last one is VFX, right? Yeah, with you. I got a bit. I got a sentence on PU side, then a couple sentences on the squadron side. VFX. So VFX continued their task for jump points and support, and supported vehicles, weapons, and location teams with a variety of deliverables, including the Argo Atlas and the RSI Zeus Mark II. Squadron side. Uh, the VFX team continued working towards their current milestones, supporting the Cinemax, uh, Cinemax gameplay locations and web scenes with their content deliverables. The VFX team is currently working on optimizations to ensure the best experience for all players. Ba -dum, ba -dum. All done. That's it. Hooray! We did it. Another yeah, month done. No, no, Q, I, like, and, and I've, uh, CR did a big post on this back in 2019, and it's still relevant. You know, and, and larger ships will still be able to achieve higher speeds. I'm just saying that, like, you know, for, for all ships, you know, you know the, the, the longer your jump, the higher speed you're able to achieve. Um, you know, and, and, you know, top speeds for larger ships would be, high, you know, significantly higher than for, for smaller ships. But even if you, if, if you make a, a short jump with a large ship, your top speed will be would be shorter would be lower during that jump than versus a longer jump because you you don't you have to you know accelerate 
without accelerating because it's it doesn't work that way but accelerate without accelerating during quantum to reach that top speed and if you only have a certain amount of time you know and a certain amount of acceleration you need a longer period to reach that high speed but you know the 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 small ship would reach that high speed early on in that long jump and just be traveling at their max speed you know and then you know not get nearly as far before they ran out of gas if you just let players overclock their own thing, they'll just have it on full all the time. 